All right, today I'm going to talk about subroutines. Um, a subroutine is basically um, a line of code within a program to execute another program. So where that comes in handy is if you've got, say, however many um, counterboard holes or whatever you want to do that's identical features you can repeat it over and over again from a program but just using one line of code instead of writing it all out and having a massive program okay so in this example I'm going to helical mill four holes um, the orange lines are your feeding lines dotted lines are wrapping around um, now they're a 50 diameter hole using a 25 mil cutter so it's just straight down bore or counter bore whatever you want to call it round hole um, this is what it looks like I'll go slow first let's see it's just going around and down like a corkscrew so like that Okay, so here's the code generated by Virtual Gibbs using um, the specific Fennec um, post processor. However, even though it's for a Fennec, the um, G codes should be very similar to other machines, and I'll go into that in a minute. But basically, here, what you've got is your main program number, and then you've got your sub program. Now what happens on the newer FANUC controls that um, I know of, the older ones might do it as well, I don't know. Um, when you load it into the machine, it automatically splits this up. So this would become its own program visible in the um, program folder. So all you really need to know is that um, this is the sub program for those um, helical milled holes. This is the main program that um, you would normally write. Uh, if you're writing it longhand, you'd probably get to a point where you think, oh, I could um, really use a subroutine right now so that I didn't have to keep writing the code over and over again. Um, so basically, uh, we've got our main program number. Uh, the first line sets your X and Y coordinate system for arcs and stuff like that. Cancels, um, radius compensation, and any can cycles that may still be active. That's just, that first line is just for protection. Uh, so we call up our first tool, tool one. We've got a note there just explaining what's happening. Now it says fretting because in virtual Gibbs you can use a fretting cycle to helical mill. That's all helical milling is, is basically a fretting cycle, but you're using a tipped cutter or whatever, an end mill, to machine a bore. Now G54 is our work coordinate system. I assume you know all about this. Um, setting our speeds and turning the spindle on. So now here's where it gets interesting. Uh, we've got a G90, which is absolute positioning in relation to um, the work coordinate position. So now it's going to wrap it to the center of our first hole. Then it's going to call on the tool height offset for tool number one. Um, turn the coolant on rapid to Z positive 25 that's 25 mil above the job in the absolute position okay now we're going to execute our subroutine now it's simple one line of code M98 P2 that tells the machine to execute the subroutine program number two which is over here so now basically it's going to execute this entire program until it reads an M99. 
Um, so basically here, we've got our program number, our sub number, um, note, just to let us know what's happening. Um, now we switch to incremental, so everything that happens from here on in is an incremental movement from our current position, meaning it's going to move exactly the amount that we tell it to. So G1, Z minus 25, F500, it's going to feed down minus 25 mil from its current position, which will put the tool smack on top of the job. So now G41 is going to call on radius compensation and move 12.5 millimeters from our current position calling on the radius compensation of tool number one. Now we're going to start the helical milling part which is G3, Z minus 1, J minus 25. Again this isn't an ideal code but it's automatically generated from virtual Gibbs uh, which is controlled by the post processor. Um, so that's going to keep feeding down until it gets to the defi uh, defined end point. Just a little uh, side tracking moment here. Um, let's say for instance you run a, um, a machine with a different controller and this code doesn't work. Most machines should be able to do this kind of uh, work like a Fagor control or whatever and their code, the code for a Fagor control would go like this. Um, and now K minus one, the K refers to your Z axis movement. So I's, J's and K's refer to X, Y and Z. Okay, so now that we've done our bore, we're going to feed to the back to the center of the hole while calling off radius compensation. We're going to switch back to G90 mode, which is absolute programming, and rapid to 25 millimeters above the job. Now, when it reads the M99, it's going to flip back to the original program to the line after that. So let's read that, executed our sub program, read the M99 and moves on. So now it's going to rapid to the next hole center, execute the sub program, move to the next hole center, execute the sub program, and so on and so on. Now it's going to turn the coolant off. This code um, wraps the machine home. Turn the spindle off and M30, the end of the program. That's it. So now the only limit to this is basically um, your own mind, really, or uh, imagination. You can make it whatever you like, this sub-program, as long as it's functional and it um, finishes where it begins, then you've got no problem. I'm James Morris, thanks for listening and uh, keep your eyes open for my next programming uh, hints and tips, which is going to be about macro programming, which is very similar but a lot more powerful.